Good morning, everybody. It's Mrs. O'Brien. I'm going to try a new angle today. I'm still trying to learn how to best record things. So now we're going to look at the book this way. And we're going to look at this really beautiful book called Insects. It's a National Geographic book by Robin Bernard. I wonder what kind of insect that is. Does anyone know? Hmm. Let's open up and find out. The world is full of little creepy crawly things, but not all of them are insects. A wiggly worm isn't. A slow poke snail isn't. Even a hairy spider isn't an insect. Hmm. Do you think this animal is an insect? Wow. How many body parts do you count? One, two, three. If you counted three, it probably is an insect. Is this Katie did an insect? Count its legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you counted six, you can be sure it's an insect. Insects are the only animals in the world that have six legs. Let's look here. A grasshopper has six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. A beetle has six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. A moth has six legs too. They are all insects. The things that insects can do with their legs and feet might surprise you. This is a fly. A house fly tastes things with its front feet. Whoa. A katydid hears through tiny holes near its knees. It hears. So flies can taste through their legs and feet. Katydids can hear through their legs. A praying mantis uses its strong front legs to hold its prey. Uh-oh, look at that. Looks like he got, is that a grasshopper or a katydid? A honeybee carries pollen in its baskets on its legs. See, there's the pollen. Most insects have wings. Besides birds and bats, insects are the only animals that can fly. Flying makes it easier for them to find food. It's a fast way to escape enemies too. Whoa. Nearly all insects have two feelers on their heads. They are used for feeling, tasting, and hearing things. Some insects can even smell things with their feelers. We'll call those antennas. Insects have mouth parts that are just right for the food they eat. A butterfly sips nectar. Its mouth is like a straw. So I don't know if you can see this right here coming out. That's not one of its legs. That's like a tongue. That's like a straw with it. It's hollow on the inside and it's called a proboscis. And it unrolls its proboscis and drinks up the nectar and then rolls it back up again. A fly soaks up yucky garbage. Its mouth is like a sponge. A grasshopper chews plants. Its mouth part is like a pair of scissors. Ooh, a mosquito sucks blood. Its mouth is like a needle. Insects are a favorite snack of frogs, birds, and bats. But insects have lots of ways to keep from being eaten. Oh, do you see that? Do you see that frog? It's looking at that dragonfly. 
wants to eat it. Some insects hide in plain sight. Tree toppers can fool you. They look like thorns on a stem. Oh look, so this is a, like say a rose and that's the thorn. And look at that. That insect, a tree hopper, its body is shaped like a thorn so it won't get eaten. A leaf insect looks just like another dry leaf. Can you spy it in here? Hmm. It's easy to miss a tree bark grasshopper on a tree trunk. Whoa, it's big. Look, it's the whole thing. It looks like camouflaged. Did you know that most insects hatch from eggs? See all the eggs? Many baby bugs look like their parents, but only smaller. You can tell that they're what they are even before they grow up. Oh look, this is that same, was it a tree? A tree hopper? Here's the tree hopper. And look, there's the baby tree, top, tree hopper with a tiny little spike. Baby milkweed bugs look like their parents. And so do baby roaches. Other insect babies don't look like their parents at all. Can you? That's a caterpillar. This caterpillar hatched from an egg too. But when it grows up, here it is again from a different view. It's going to be a big brown moth. Wow. Insects are amazing and they are everywhere. So be careful where you step. You might find a six-legged creature that's more fun to watch than to squash. Remember how we always talk about not squashing bugs? Okay, so this is what I thought I'd do. I have a piece of paper here and I thought you could draw with me. We're just gonna practice. I need to find my pens. So I thought we could try to draw an insect from what we learned. And I'm gonna find a dark color. Of course I don't have black in my pens here at home. Everything is at school. So I thought we know some things based on that book. And then if we go back to our packet that I gave you with our busy bug book which has insects and spiders and we looked at words to know I started to color it in I don't know if you did but if we look down here it reminds us that insects have six legs and let's see I'm gonna turn the page and turn the page I'm pretty sure in here somewhere it describes insects better. And if not, I'm just going to teach you. Oh, I guess not. So I'm going to just show you the body parts of an insect. And we're going to start drawing a circle at the top. You guys can all do that. That's going to be the head of my insect. Okay. And on the head, I'm going to draw two big compound eyes on the side and color them in. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I'll add two antenna. Let's see if I take one and come up high. Remember they called them feelers? And two over here. Now I don't know how my insect's going to turn out. We're just going to see. So that's the head. So we know it has a head. Then the second body part is called the thorax. Can you guys say that? Thorax. The thorax is where the legs are. And remember, insects have six legs. So I'm going to do three on this side. And they're usually in segments. One. Two, three, and I'll do three on the other side. One, 
two, three. Then, so, so far we have the head and the thorax. Maybe I'll do a line just to let you know. You don't have to do this, but that's pointing to the head. And then this part is the thorax. Thorax. Hey, it has the word ax. The thorax are where the legs are. And then the third body part is the abdomen. The abdomen. Now, I don't know what my insect is, if I can recognize it, but I bet I could turn it into something. Let me see. What if... I put wings on my insect because it did say that most insects have wings and the wings would also be on the thorax. So I'm going to go back to the thorax and draw one wing and then one more wing. Make sure it's attached to the thorax, not the abdomen. The abdomen is like the stomach of the bug. So now I'm going to go on the other side, but I have words written there, but I'm just going to go over my words. And then. <laughs> hmm. Let's try it one more time without me having the words. So we have a head that holds the antenna. and the compound eyes. Then we have the thorax, which holds the six legs. And then don't forget the abdomen and the wings. Most insects are symmetrical, which means they're the same on both sides. It's really hard to do symmetry when you're just drawing with your hands. But let's say I wanted to decorate my wings. I would draw one shape on one side and go over and draw the same shape on the other side. Let's say I wanted to do some circles. Well, I would want it to be the same or symmetrical on the other side. Maybe a couple lines. One, two, one, two. And maybe one big shape on this wing here. And one big shape on this wing here. And I'm gonna give a little happy face on mine. So this might look like a funny dragonfly or a moth or a butterfly, but really what I want you guys to remember is an insect has three body parts. Okay? It has six legs, two, they call them feelers. but you can also call them antenna. And hmm, one other thing I can tell you is they have an exoskeleton, which means their skeleton is on the outside of their bodies and that's why they look like they have a hard body, most of them. Our skeletons are on the inside of our body, but most insects have exoskeletons, okay? So maybe all of you can draw an insect and then color it in, Use make it look really beautiful. If you don't wanna color an insect on paper, maybe make an insect out of clay or Play-Doh. Or maybe you make an insect out of using nature. Maybe that's what I'll do today. I'll go find nature and see if I can make an insect. 
using leaves and sticks and whatnot. And then I will read you another story in a little bit and do the calendar. So I'm gonna continue drawing my insect and you can do yours at home and have somebody take a picture of it and maybe you can share it on our Facebook page. And I wanted to know if we go back to our packet here. I talked about only doing a few of the pages, but tomorrow I wanna to talk about ladybugs. And I'm noticing is, here we have where can I be found? Remember we talked about a wasp would live in a wasp nest or a paper wasp and, and find their homes. So here, I'll do that with you right now just to check it. You would draw a line from the wasp to where you would find that wasp. Or a butterfly and a caterpillar would come from a chrysalis. Now a spider is a arachnid. It's an arachnid, not an insect, because it has how many legs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this packet's about bugs, which are including spiders, but really we're just working on insects. See, here's an ant. Head, thorax, abdomen. One, two, three, four, five, six legs, and two antenna or feelers. And ants make their home, most of them, underground. Okay. Who lives here? It's not an insect. It's probably a spider. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> And your bug buddies, when you work on this, it wants you to try to do the same thing over here. So you would start with the head, just like we just did. And the two antenna, two little eyes. Look at this long body. Now this body looks almost like it's just one part, but I believe that you would say this would be the abdomen maybe down here, and this would be the thorax. One, two, whoa, three, four, five, six. So try your best at copying them. This one is hidden insects. You're supposed to look up here and spy oh, that insect down here. I'm gonna circle it to show that I found it. And I'm gonna cross this one off. Ooh, where would that be? I remember that that one is a challenging one. And you know why it's challenging? It's upside down in the picture. I'm not gonna show you, I want you to find it. And then this one you know is you start where the ladybug is. Remember, we're always practicing top to bottom. So start at the top and go down. Start at the top, down, top, down, top, down. Yeah, that's number one. Let's try this one. Start at the top. Go around, across, and back at the top. So that's what I want you to do with this, is practice always starting at the top. Here's a maze, and you're trying to help this little ant go home. Wow, I gave you a lot of pages to do. Finding, let's move this. Finding bug twins. Two bugs in each row are twins. Circle the two that are exactly alike. 
I'm just gonna do the first one. It looks like a dragonfly, doesn't it? Look at the stripes. And it has the six legs and it has the wings. Oh, it has the six legs and the wings and the stripes. Oh, but this one looks different. See how much thinner its body is? It doesn't have the stripes. Circle the two that are alike. I'm gonna circle this one. And I'm gonna circle this one. But not that one. Maybe I'll cross this one off so I know. It is not like the others. Okay. And then the next few pages are just some really beautiful creatures that you might find in your garden. So you can color them in or you can make it a game where you go outside and try to find these animals. You could cut them out and make little puppets out of popsicle sticks. And this is the same. What I did was I took the pictures that were here and I blew them up and cut them out so they were bigger. So we have ladybug. If you want to challenge yourself, why don't you trace the words and then color it in. Butterfly. Praying mantis. He's sideways. Cricket. Then you know snail, pill bug, ant, beetle, and dragonfly. You could even take scissors and cut along the lines and then cut down and make a little book. But then stop there and tomorrow we're gonna do, I'm thinking if we do a Zoom meeting with everybody, I can show you some really cool pictures of a ladybug and we can talk about the body parts of a ladybug. And then we can talk about the life cycle of a ladybug. And today I'm going to try to find some pupa or larva outside, I'll see. So don't do this yet. But you have all of this you can do if you want. All right, and have fun with it. And remember, don't forget to take a picture of an insect that you draw, or maybe you can find rocks and sticks and leaves to make a nature insect. You could use Legos and you could build an insect. Anything you want, be creative. Okay, and I will talk to you soon. Just keep looking for more things from me today while I search for ladybug larva. All right, take care, you guys. Bye.